Hi, and welcome to another video update from the Fire Brigade Union. Once again, under the difficult circumstances caused by the lockdown due to coronavirus, we're joined once again by General Secretary Matt Rack to discuss the vital issues of fire service pay. Now, Matt, it's the start of July. This is the time traditionally when fire service pay is resolved. I know you've written to the employers regarding this, so what's the update? Well, thanks, Tam. Hi, everyone. Uh, so we uh, had an NJC, the National Joint Council, at the beginning of June. And before that meeting, we had written from the Executive Council to the fire service employers, uh, setting out the case for substantial increase in pay, um, pointing out to the impact of austerity and the pay freeze on our members, on their real wages and their living standards. We then followed that up at the National Joint Council meeting to verbally put that uh, to the employers. Now, the settlement date is the 1st of July, uh, and in the run up to the 1st of July, we contacted the employers again, and we've had a letter back from them, which has now been circulated to all members. So that can be found on the website, or hopefully on fire stations, uh, and so on. Uh, and they said that they needed to consult their side, that's consult all the employers, which they, they normally do, uh, but be, because of practical problems, they haven't been able to do that so far. So that's disappointing. They, you know, they knew the 1st of July is the settlement date. Uh, and I suppose my view is they could have done that before the 1st of July, but the truth is that they haven't. Uh, they have told us that those discussions are likely to take place during July, uh, and we will expect a pay offer at that point. Uh, so it's um, it's not unusual. We have had several years when pay hasn't been resolved on the 1st of July. It is then backdated to the 1st of July, but it is frustrating that we haven't had an offer as yet to put to our members for their consideration. No, absolutely. Now, Matt, just for the firefighters and control staff watching this, when the employers actually do make us an offer, how is that going to be dealt with in regard to talking to people, consulting with people across the union? Well, the Executive Council gets that uh, offer and considers how to do that. So we've sometimes consulted through union structures. So that means putting the information out to branches, asking branches to meet, feed through to uh, their regions, and then the Executive Council making that decision. On other occasions, we've obviously balloted members. It depends on the, the how controversial the issue is and the, view, the assessment the Executive Council makes at that time. I think it's worth just making a point about how pay uh, is funded in the fire service, because it's an important point. Um, it, the, the fire service in the UK is funded in two ways. One, by local taxation through council taxes, and secondly, by central government grants. Uh, it's slightly different in different parts of the UK, in Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, because of devolution. But generally, one key thing to remember is the Westminster government holds those purse strings. So it's not simply a local service. It's the Westminster government hold, they don't negotiate with us, but they hold the purse strings. So one of the key things we've got to think about to win pay rises, we have to convince or force central government to invest in the fire service because that's where pay is gonna come from. So these are big uh, challenges that we face uh, and we need to think of as we emerge from, from COVID. Okay, Matt, now onto another issue. I think everyone would have been shocked at the news last week about the potential cuts getting faced by London Fire Brigade and substantial cuts to their budget announced recently. I mean, what's the update in, in regard to that? What's the union's view in it? Yeah, so I think uh, London is the first to announce, if you like, the threat to post-COVID funding. Uh, although we had some cuts you know, during the COVID that we, we've been fighting off in East Sussex, for example. Uh, and again, it refers back to the last point that funding comes either from council taxpayers and, from, or, and or from central government. And if central government cuts back and back and back, then there is a funding gap. And that affects everything, the number of fire stations, but also what firefighters get paid. Both of those are dependent on central government funding and local government funding. And uh, what uh, we hear from the Mayor of London is that there's this something like a 500 million pound gap that they've identified. And that's because of, in their case, a fall off of income to Transport for London, a fall off of uh, business rate income and council tax income. 
and that's opening up a gap. And they are arguing that the government needs to step in and fill that gap. I think the worrying is that the worry is that this is wider than London. I've seen comments from the local government association saying that that same problem is going to occur across, certainly across England, but probably across the most of the uh, of the UK. Because of course, if businesses are closed or furloughed or whatever, shut for one reason or because of COVID, then they are not employing people. They are not, uh, they're, they're seeking not to pay their business rates and so on. Um, and likewise, unemployment, if unemployment rises to 3 million as is now being predicted, then this has an, a, another impact on uh, public finances. So we're, fa we're facing potentially a very challenging time as hopefully, you know, COVID isn't over, but hopefully as we emerge from COVID, uh, and we're going to have a big political battle to ensure that the government uh, invests in jobs, protecting jobs and protecting public services for the long term. And the London cuts, I think, are part of that much bigger picture. Uh, of course, Matt, it's, it's not just London, is it? I mean, we've had a big reaction from the public, shocked at the announcement of potential cuts. Of course, this isn't the first time the fire brigade unions had to fight cuts during this um, crisis. For instance, in East Sussex, massive cuts announced. I mean, where are we with that? Yeah, absolutely insulting, isn't it, to firefighters who've, who've stepped up to help out during the pandemic, um, whether it's in London or East Sussex, but in, in East Sussex, in the middle of the pandemic, to start discussing uh, cuts to fire stations, getting rid of pumps and so on. Uh, and there's a very angry reaction from our members, and I think from lots of the public in East Sussex, and we've been running a very effective campaign to put them on the back foot in relation to those cuts. So we ca we carry on, and any chief who comes with proposals for cuts will ex can expect exactly the same uh, from us. Matt, thanks very much indeed. Well, for more news and updates on that, you can go to our website, and that's simply www.fu.org.uk. But for more media updates, of course, you can follow us on Twitter. And that is, of course, at FU National. So next time, thanks for joining us. And thanks very much indeed, Matt. Thanks a lot, Tom.